Hello and welcome to today's April 18th daily news report. If you're a subscribed member of my community, then welcome back. You watch this channel each day because I keep you in the loop on what's really going on in Washington, D.C. with President Biden and the U.S. economy. So let's jump right in. There's so much to go over today. As you can see, I'm in a different location. I'm actually at a family reunion in the state of Florida, but I wanted to get this news out to you. Uh, I also want to thank today's video sponsor, York Harbor Metals, and I'm going to tell you why this company's up over 120% in just 2022 and why I think they have a lot of potential going forward. But first, let's keep you in the loop on what's happening today in the news. Okay, after being hounded nonstop, uh, President Biden and his administration have finally agreed to resume the leasing to drill on federal land from different court cases. So uh, this practice will resume starting this week, but they're saying it could take a couple of months to get back up and running, but this is very good news. So we're now going to be producing significantly more oil here at home, which should bring the, the price of gas down at the pump. Now, in order to not completely be run over by all of the environmentalists, President Biden and his administration are going to tack on a, a fee in order to keep things cleaner and as a way to not, not just pump more gas, but simultaneously try to make the country a greener country. So some are saying this is kind of a hypocritical move because on the one hand, Biden wants us to go full electric and save the planet. On the other hand, uh, he's losing approval rating like crazy. Everybody's super mad about the gas prices, the grocery prices. And so they're saying, you know, you're starving the country for a resource that we are abundantly blessed with, you know, lots and lots of gas here. So that is going to be reopening and that's some very good news that I wanted to share with you. Now, gas prices and inflation are a huge issue in the American mind. Uh, and as of right now, Biden's green uh, energy campaign promises are standing at odds with fixing the problem that he has. So even though he, genuinely wants to improve the country, make everyone drive electric vehicles, uh, it's probably not going to happen because he's just up against so many difficulties on so many different fronts. Now, Mark Penn, who was a former Clinton advisor and pollster, recently shared that at this point, he believes Biden is virtually unelectable. So because of all of the challenges that uh, President Biden is up against, there's zero chance that he will run again in 2024 because there's zero chance that he will win again. This according to this former uh, Democrat Clinton advisor. Uh, he says, because there's just so many things going on and that the Democrats will likely lose the House and the Senate this coming fall, President Biden's presidency is basically over and that he will become a lame duck president from 2023 till the end of 2024. Now, most people did not see this coming. Um, they had really high expectations for Biden, but there's just so many things stacked against him. And so this uh, former Clinton advisor is basically saying it, it's, it's over, it's a done deal. Now, Russian state TV recently broadcast that Russia has entered World War III. Now, this is shockingly false, but here's what's going on. Ukraine was able to blast and take down a warship of Russia's that I told you about sank last week. All these photos and video of it are coming out. And so now many Russians are thinking, oh my gosh, we've entered World War III. And so this could be a game changer going forward with the war, but hopefully they can get this false information and propaganda under control. Now, it's been 50 days since the Russia-Ukraine military operation or war, whatever you want to call it, began. And, uh, you know, the Ukrainian people, they, they've done so good at uh, defending their country, but they're up against a wall right now. And President Zelensky is saying, hey, even though we're grateful to the United States for billions and billions of dollars, $800 million worth of military equipment, he says, we need so much more. We're gonna need the world 
to help us out. And specifically, he wants the United States to help out. And he told President Biden to quit being a chicken and come to uh, Ukraine. But if something were to happen while a sitting president is in a foreign country, it could be very, very bad on the global scale. So uh, as of right now, Biden is not heading to Ukraine. And uh, Russia is saying, do not get involved. Do not keep sending them weapons. And Ukraine is saying, send us weapons or we're all dead and the blood is on your hands. So it's a very, very tricky position to be in. Hopefully they can continue to manage it well. So far, the West has donated, you know, as I said, millions or excuse me, billions of dollars and hundreds of millions of dollars in equipment. And uh, Biden is, is labeling this as genocide, saying that Russia has committed genocide. Well, now a top military official at the Pentagon is saying, President Biden is wrong. This is not genocide. You can't have 0.01% of a town die and call it genocide. The numbers statistically have to be significantly uh, higher. So although it is horrific and although it is terrible, they are saying, stop calling this a genocide. This is not a genocide um, and that we need to continue to support the people of Ukraine. However, from Zelensky's position, who is Jewish and had family that died in the Holocaust, he's seeing all this death and he is saying this is definitely uh, genocide. So there's some difference in definition uh, on a world scale. While everyone's focused on uh, what's going on with Russia and Ukraine, China is still dealing with a lot of COVID, but also a zero uh, tolerance policy that is really hurting China and could end up hurting our supply chain here in the United States. Now, there are Ukrainian refugees that have made their way to China and they're saying that they're being locked in buildings where the lights are on 24 hours a day. It's making them literally go kind of crazy. And even if you test negative for COVID twice, they're keeping you in this forced government lockdown. So the government is definitely uh, stepping all over the human rights of the people of China right now. And it'll be interesting to see what happens. Now, this is how it could mess up our supply chain, right? If 25 million people in Shanghai and another 10 million in other regions of China are locked down, that means they're not working. If they're not working, stuff's not being built. If stuff's not being built, it's not being shipped. So it might help with the bottleneck at the ports, but it's certainly not helping us get that supply chain robust and healthy again. And, and hopefully, you know, we can just start building more here at home and not being so dependent on other countries. But that's, that's probably, I'm just going to be real with you. That's probably not going to change that much. And so it is going to possibly affect the supply chain down the road. Now, here's where things could get a little bit crazy. Uh, China is trying to build a digital currency using the Chinese dollar. And it's been rumored that they're actually doing this in an attempt to overthrow the US dollar. And so the United States is going to be pushing back. They're, they're saying that this is being raised as a serious issue. I mean, if the US dollar goes away or stops being the world reserve currency or the petro reserve currency, uh, things could change very, very quickly in the United States. Our inflation could go crazy. There's a lot of things that could happen. And so the, the worry is because China manipulates their dollars, right? Uh, then we have to play that game too. And so then the US dollar uh, doesn't look as strong as it really is because of currency manipulation. And so this could be a big issue that the, the lawmakers in Washington, D.C. have to squash or deal with more aggressively. As Biden opens up the border with removing Title 42, authorities have just released information that they captured over the weekend 400 million pounds, or excuse me, 400 pounds of meth, cocaine, and heroin totaling millions and millions of dollars. Now, this is what's really unsettling about this is there is a 94% increase in drug overdose among teenagers with a lot of it being uh, fentanyl related. There's so much fentanyl coming across the border um, that the, these teens, they're, they're just getting, it's being laced into all kinds of different drugs. And so it, it is what it is, but they've got to, they've got to fix this part of the border. 
Now, many Democrats, this kind of shocked me. This really shocked me. Many Democrats are now saying that Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is to blame for the lack of stimulus help the American people are getting. What? I thought it was all Joe Manchin's fault, right? But they're saying that uh, he's the one that failed to pass the Build Back Better bill. He's the one that failed parents with getting the child tax credit program back up and running and all of the other stimulus programs that they were promising us a few, a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, they're still on the table, but they're not being passed. And now some of these uh, Democrats that could lose their seats in November, they're finally coming out and they're saying, listen, uh, we think that this is Senator Schumer's fault um, because, and here's, here's their reasoning, instead of working with Joe Manchin, they tried this approach of publicly shaming these lawmakers uh, on every TV interview, radio interview, podcast interview. And, but instead of changing their opinion, these, these leaders, these congressional leaders, they dug in their heels and now they're, they're like, they don't wanna come out of it, right? And so now Schumer is not talking to Joe Manchin and Manchin is saying, we've gotta get something passed. So it's like the tide has turned and now everybody's turning against Senator Chuck Schumer. So uh, in, instead of working with the Mansions, the Kellys, the cinemas, again, they, they shamed them and it ended up going the opposite direction of, of where they wanted to go. So hopefully uh, now that they're back in Washington, DC, they can come together and start working on bills. All right, now we've been hearing a lot of the moves of billionaire Elon Musk in the media. Uh, it's not often that we get to hear what billionaires are doing. However, I wanna tell you about what one billionaire is doing by the name of Eric Sprott. Uh, Eric Sprott believes that the United States is entering a new industrial revolution, as well as what Wall Street calls a commodity super cycle. This means everyday items uh, are going to be the best investments going forward. Now, for the last decade, it's been technology companies, Twitter, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, uh, but now these companies, they're starting to drop in value or they're getting pushback because of the way that they treat different demographic, uh, demographics or how they've been found to be toxic, different things like that. So the group I wanna tell you about today is York Harbor Metals, ticker symbol Y-O-R-K-F, as in fantastic. Now, you can get them on most major trading platforms like TD Ameritrade or Fidelity. And I don't want to just tell you about them because they're up 323% since last June. Uh, so in the last 11 months. Also, they're up about 120% in this year alone. And uh, the reason I'm telling you about them isn't to make you feel bad that you missed out on all of this rise. is because I believe over the next 10 years... This company is just getting started and it's gonna be a great opportunity to buy and hold uh, this particular stock. Now, as with all mining stocks, I've been telling you this, right? These stocks kind of go up and down. The majority of them have gone down. A few of them have gone, or excuse me, the majority have gone up and a few of them have gone down, but that's only because once you buy into these, you have to look at it as owning a company. And now that company has to actually go dig in the earth, right? They've got to find the metals or the minerals and then extract them from the earth. And so it just takes some time in order to do that. And just as Elon Musk recently bought 9% of Twitter, billionaire Eric Sprott owns 7% of York Harbor Metals. Now, here's something interesting that I just read. Not once has he traded or sold any of this stock? In fact, he's just added to his position, which tells you where his thinking's at, right? In the stock world, they say he's bullish, right? He's like a charging bull. He believes that this thing is going to continue to rise. And so in just the last 30 days, I saw this press release that York Harbor Metals uh, completed a uh, core sampling with their dig team and their geologists. And the core found tons of copper and cobalt and zinc and gold. These are all metals that we are going to need massive amounts going forward for building, becoming more electric, more clean energy, things like that. Now, this, this particular company, 52% of the stock is held privately and nobody has sold. So 
The other, the other portion, the other 48% are owned by me and, and other people, uh, but this is held by just a few people that believe they're going to hit a pay dirt or they're going to be bought out as soon as they hit that pay dirt. And so their exit strategy looks really, really strong, especially based on the samplings that they're pulling out of the earth right now. So I believe that this company is either going to really take off and have excellent cash flow as they find those minerals uh, and metals, but also they're, they're probably going to be bought out because every major mining company right now, they're not digging, they're looking for companies that are digging, right? Because if it takes a year or two to get something up and running, why not buy a company that's already one to two years into getting up and running, right? And uh, you saw the core samples that I put up here on the screen, but uh, they're all looking for copper, massive amounts of copper. They're looking for zinc, they're looking for gold, and they're looking for cobalt. And so I believe this company is going to be red hot uh, look really, really good to these larger mining operations. So again, that's York Harbor Metals and their ticker symbol is Y-O-R-K-F, as in fantastic opportunity. Now, full disclosure, I do own uh, some shares in this company and you need to do your own research. I'm just giving you an idea of where to go start researching, uh, but this is one that I believe is a great buy and hold for my own money, but again, you must do your own research. But uh, what a great opportunity to jump in as this thing has lots of opportunity to rise over the next 10 years or so. Now, this is my update for today. As I know more, I will definitely come on and share more with you. Before you go, make sure to click and get your name entered to be one of the winners of the giveaway that Casey and I are doing. We're giving away $100 cash gift cards uh, for gas. These ridiculously high gas prices are affecting the cost of our food. Everything we buy comes in from these truckers, bless their hearts. They're dealing with the high gas prices and so are you. I'm feeling it. I just filled up yesterday, it cost me $115 to fill up before I got on an airplane here to Florida. So I'll make sure to leave a link below. Now, before you go, I just wanna remind you that you are amazing. I appreciate you being in my community and I'll see you on the next video.